Hello again, so I've been at the workbench again today and I've basically created a new version of the um, the twin chiller that you might have seen in some of the previous videos. I've made quite a few kind of updated versions of it since the first one that I made for myself that you've seen in a lot of my videos. Um, and basically I wanted to uh, update my, uh, my own one and um, also add a few extras to it. So it's got a few extra gimmicks added onto it, but this is the twin chiller Mark III Extreme Edition. <laughs> So let's get a closer look at this. So basically it's the same kind of design as before, um, but with a couple of um, minor differences. Well, not minor, pretty big differences actually. For this one, I managed to get hold of a 25 meter uh, roll of eight mil micro bore copper. So I basically just split that in half. So there's actually about five meters extra copper in this. Um, it's yeah, it's a shitload of copper pipe basically. There's uh, there's obviously the two coils in there. It's just under four kilos worth of copper in total. And um, that's pretty much an extra 25% um, of thermal mass or uh, cooling pipe there to hopefully chill the wart down extra fast. So it's a bit bigger, footprint's a little bit wider. It's about 25 centimeters long rather than 20. It does just about fit in the kettle. Otherwise, all the fittings have been done the same, but you may have spotted there's also this extra little bit here going on. So this is my attempt at a whirlpool arm that I've integrated into the chiller itself. At the moment, I've just um, cable tied it onto the side there, but I will hopefully be getting some sort of plastic uh, pipe clips to put on here so that I can detach it easier and actually take it out of the um, out of the kettle when I'm using it so I can transfer stuff either that or I'll get some sort of um, probably cam lock or something to put on the top of there if I do leave it attached on there permanently but in the meantime I'll probably be wanting to detach that anyway the idea is of that that I will obviously be able to whirlpool um, because I've also just recently got one of these so I've got a um, nice pump there got that from malt miller and we'll be using that to drive the whirlpool which means I'm not gonna have to stand over the pot stirring um, the beer around constantly and hopefully that will also make it chill a lot faster as well so that's what we've got it's a big old lump of metal um, but I'm hoping that with the whirlpool action integrated and the extra copper this is going to up the performance even better than um, what we had previously so uh, let's do a few quick tests on it and then we'll hopefully get some footage of it in action okay so a quick leak test first of all just collecting some water in the kettle to uh, test out the whirlpool afterwards as well but we we'll just zoom in on the joints there everything is looking nice and watertight Okay, so we've got some water in there. Um, this is about the depth that I would have for a typical 21 or 23 litre batch, I think. Um, as you can see, it's all fully submerged, which is one of the advantages of having the horizontal coils rather than the vertical ones. Um, as I said in the previous videos, uh, that was all kind of part of the original design. I haven't covered the actual build part of this in this video because there's the um, two previous videos on this that you can have a look at I'll put a link to those up now and at the end of the video uh, but it does only just fit into the kettle so this is pretty much the most uh, the most coils that I think I could put on with this kind of layout to comfortably get it in as you can see it's just about bumping up against the uh, elements and the taps and so on inside but it fits and uh, it's all fully underwater um, that little test run has flushed through a bit of crap from the um, the flux and so on uh, so I've cleaned out the chiller there a bit but I can now use this water to give the whirlpool arm a quick go so let's uh, hook that up and give it a quick test and see if that works okay so I've got that all hooked up with my silicon tubing that you can see there hopefully that'll all stay in place when we fire it up 
So I'm going to open that valve there first of all, and then the outlet on the pump, which should prime the pump as you can see there. So we've got a little bit of gravity to help out there, so the pump's set lower than the tank, and that's obviously pulled the water through nicely. And now we switch our pump on. Sounds like we've got something going on. Let's have a little look in here. So it's definitely doing the job. Um, yeah, that's a pretty nice little whirlpool going on there with the water. Um, that would certainly be sufficient for my needs in terms of just keeping the work moving and obviously moving it across those coils. Uh, and that's also going to help with the hop utilisation hopefully, so getting lots of flavour out of those last minute uh, whirlpool additions. Okay, happy with that and again, doesn't appear to be anything leaking. Pumps surprisingly quiet. I thought that would be a bit noisy in that, but that's pretty good too. So yeah, that's working. Um, just need to test it with some actual beer now. So hopefully be doing that tomorrow. Okay, so it's kind of well, you could see it a little bit there around the outside, but it's kind of difficult to see the actual flow rate coming off of that pump. So just to give you an idea, I'll just lift this up a second. So you can see there, it does come out through that whirlpool outlet. That's a fair old lick. And uh, yeah, although it's difficult to see it with just the clear water there, it is getting a good, good amount of movement around there. So I think that's going to be really effective. So let's give this a quick test with some actual beer. So this was a 23 litre batch that I brewed today. And... Uh, yeah, as you can see, we're chilling down from boiling, so 100 degrees down to pitching temperature of 20. Over the first minute and a half there, it absolutely flew down to about 70 degrees. And uh, yeah, doing really well for the first three minutes. So we're down at 50 after three minutes. So going really fast, and this is the point where it starts to slow down a little bit. So the first 50 degrees are super quick, and then it gradually slows a little bit as we get towards the desired temperature. Um, I just moved the hops around a little bit there, which seemed to cause the temperature to jump up briefly for some reason. Not sure what was going on there, but um, I actually shot the original footage at the start of this video way back in the summer. So I've left it a few months because uh, at some points over the summer, the tap uh, water was actually up at 24 degrees. So it was really affecting how um, well the chiller could work. Uh, it's now nine degrees. And as you can see, it's, um, yeah, doing quite a good job there. So we're just coming up to the end now. 20 degrees is what we're aiming for. And we hit it just about here, which is uh, just under 10 minutes. So pretty, pretty quick. Um, and then as you can see here, we're also able to use the Whirlpool arm to transfer the work to the FV afterwards. So another useful um, part of having that Whirlpool arm integrated. OK, so final thoughts on the new design. I'm really liking the whirlpool arm that I've added to this one. So as you could see in the video, I didn't have to stand there stirring at all. And I can basically just leave it to do its own thing. And the work will be chilled down in under 10 minutes, which is great. The actual uh, chilling time is not a huge amount different from uh, the original design, though, to be fair. So I think I've probably hit a point of diminishing returns in terms of the amount of copper and coils that you can add in to make it effective. I think possibly when I did that first test uh, in the very first video when it came out just over 10 minutes that it was maybe the tap water was a little bit colder then. I can't remember exactly when it was that I did that original uh, test run but uh, I probably should have recorded the actual tap water temperature at that point as well but anyway the tap water will probably get a bit colder than what it was today so when it does go below that i think it will still 
uh, be able to chill down probably I think around about eight minutes will be about the fastest it will go which is, again is still really good but uh, I don't think I've gained a huge amount of benefit from using the extra uh, copper in this one so the extra number of coils now a lot of people have mentioned in comments on the previous videos that maybe it would be more efficient if I actually reduce the number of coils and space them out a little bit horizontally as well as leaving the gap in between them I think if I was gonna have another go at doing this that would be the next thing to try out so get some copper wire and put some uh, loops of that around the pipe so that it would space them out horizontally and allow more flow uh, around the full kind of circumference of each coil uh, as well as kind of through the coils through the middle and uh, down the gap in between the two but uh, really happy with it as I said I didn't uh, I have been using this for a few months since I've actually built it and haven't got any complaints pumps working out really well for me as well um, speeds up the transfer and stuff like that and it's also really good for just sort of cleaning up at the end as well so I can throw a load of cleaning solution into the kettle run the pump and just leave it for you know 10-15 minutes to sort of clean itself for a bit before I give it a final rinse out so yeah that's the uh, twin chiller extreme maybe we'll have a new updated version of it coming soon but uh, not for a while yet I don't think all right cheers guys see you soon I'm the dude so that's what you call me you know uh, that or uh, his dudeness or uh, duder or uh, you know El Duderino if